Originally released March 2015, we have Five Nights at Freddy's 3. I remember the day this came out vividly. March 2nd, 2015, it was raining and I was watching Markiplier play it because what else is a 14 year old gonna do when a highly anticipated FNAF game comes out, right? Anyway, this is Five Nights at Freddy's 3. I used to consider this game to be my least favorite of the original four, but now actually I think this game's pretty cool. FNAF 3 takes place in an attraction known as Fazbear's Fright, which is an old um, horror attraction that is designed to show off all these old pieces from the old Freddy Fazbear's Pizza locations, which you learn have now been shut down for quite some time. And you play as a security guard, and your goal is to monitor the cameras and make sure no anomalies occur. You can cycle between regular cameras and vents, but this time you have a second monitor to keep track of, the maintenance panel. And you have to monitor the camera, the audio, and the ventilation. Now, in this game, there's only one animatronic, and at the very beginning, Phone Dude, the character is named, tells you that they found a real animatronic from the old locations and talked about how excited he was. However, unbeknownst to them, this animatronic is alive and is actively trying to take you out like the other animatronics of the prior games. One thing you might notice is that your office is quite unique because no doors but you have a giant rectangular window. So on the second night you are introduced to this brand new animatronic who is alive by the name of Springtrap. And Springtrap looks fantastic in this game. I love his character design. He looks great. Uh, especially when he's at your window or at your door is especially when he looks menacing. So in order to keep Springtrap away from you, you have to play audio lures. Basically, you go to the cameras and you tap a button to play audio. And this audio is basically just reused like Balloon Boy audio from FNAF 2. But your goal is to keep Springtrap away from you by playing these audio lures and attempting to get him to walk away. Occasionally, Springtrap will go into the vents and those vents are very, very bad sometimes because those are shortcuts that can lead directly to your office or he can go halfway through the map just with one vent travel. So the vents are very dangerous for Springtrap to go to. And you might notice it's very hard to spot Springtrap on the camera sometimes. He likes to tuck himself away in corners. Sometimes it's pretty obvious because you can see him right there at the center of the screen. Sometimes he will just be tucked away in the corner. But Springtrap is the only animatronic that's actually a threat to you. From time to time, you'll have video errors, audio errors, or ventilation. The camera system is quite important because if you lose track of Springtrap, you don't know where he's at. Audio is very important too because you have to play the audio to keep Springtrap away from you. The vents also allow you to lose track of Springtrap and just the vent going out makes you very vulnerable to him. So all three are equally as important. Now as I said, when Springtrap goes into a vent, you can just seal it and that keeps him away. Using the maintenance panel to fix your audio, camera, and ventilation, sometimes even multiple at once, is kind of tricky because you have to be fast with it, but the game is random. Sometimes it takes a short amount of time, sometimes the game decides to just give you a really long cycle. FNAF 3 has a lot of randomness to it. This is a very random game. And you also are introduced to the Phantoms. This game has a handful of Phantom animatronics, like Phantom Balloon Boy, which shows up on your cameras. I believe you have to either switch cameras or just flip the monitor down. Um, the phantoms can take out your systems, such as the ventilation, but Foxy here just kind of sits there and I don't know if he does anything, but I know for a fact phantoms can cause ventilation to go out. I didn't really see Foxy that much. He only gave me like a problem maybe on two separate occasions. Then there's Phantom Mangle, who just gives you a big audio disturbance, making it hard to hear. Like other FNAF games, this game relies pretty heavily on audio cues, like ventilation sounds or a spring trap uttering the words, help me, as he moves. And... If Mangle is on screen, you can't really hear him that well, so it's a pretty bad thing. Uh, and then there's Phantom Chica, which I didn't see once. And then there's Phantom Freddy, who walks across the window. He will actually attack you if you look at him for a while. So just kind of keep your eye on the camera and the maintenance panel, and you'll be all right. Uh, sometimes when you get errors, you just have to fix them as much as you can. If the cameras go out, but you know where Springtrap's at, you can play audio to try to lure him away, and then you fix the camera systems. Sometimes when Springtrap gets into the vent, you just play audio to the room he just left, and then immediately reset your audio. On night two, you have, I believe, five uses of audio, and then on night five, you only have two uses. So the audio is guaranteed to go out after two uses on night five. However, the camera system and the vent errors are random, except for the phantoms. So, 
there is a good amount of, uh, of panic in this game because all your systems go out. You don't know where Springtrap's at. You're fixing all of your systems. You're expecting Springtrap to show up, and then he just doesn't. And then you go to the cameras, obviously not knowing where Springtrap's at, and you're like, okay, where is this guy? You look over there, he's not there. And then you reboot a system, look over, he's at your window. Look how great Springtrap looks, by the way. He looks awesome. Now, when he's at your window, it's not the end of the world. Sometimes he'll go right through the vent, straight to your window. Now, sometimes, whenever you flip the camera up, he walks right on past. You see him right there on the left, which I think looks really cool. Anytime you can physically see Springtrap, it, it just, he just looks awesome. And then sometimes he decides to tuck himself away behind your door. That looks great, too. Uh, and sometimes you can lure him away. But once he gets to your door, there's really not much you can do. You have to either just sit there and stare at him until you have the ventilation error, which obviously will cause this to happen, so be mindful of that. Or you can just accept your fate if it's like 2 in the morning or something and you know for a fact you're not going to survive. If spring traps at your window, it's not the end of the world. You could try to play audio on cam 2 if you have the ability to, and then sometimes spring trap will move there. I think there's a 1 in 7 chance spring trap will just ignore it. But it's not the end of the world because you could play to cam 2, spring trap might walk over there. As a matter of fact, uh, on two separate occasions, on night 5, he was at my window, and then he followed the audio lure. He did this on two separate occasions. Uh, I did upload that video on my channel if you'd like to see it. So, a lot yes. of this game is just pure luck. Oh, That's what most yes. of it is. It's just a lot of luck. You could play consistently well, and then the Phantoms and spring traps still decide to screw you over. So, from a gameplay perspective, I do like this game. I really do. I think it's interesting. Once you complete a night, you unlock a minigame. After finishing night one, you unlock this minigame in which you play as Freddy, and there's this purple bear, who's probably Shadow Freddy, who, t who says, follow me. He leads you to the back, only for you to be dismantled by Purple Guy, who was this mysterious character at the time. Then, after finishing night two, you play as Bonnie. And Bonnie sees the remains of Freddy, and once again, Shadow Freddy lures you towards his room for you to be dismantled by Purple Guy. Who is this Shadow Bear? I don't know. Night three, it's the same, except this time with Chica, and you see she's holding her cupcake too. And then Purple Guy comes out and dismantles you again. And then for night four, you play as Foxy. Um, once again, Shadow Freddy, this purple bear, says, follow me, leads you to the back. And then, predictably, Purple Guy shows up and dismantles you as well. Why is he doing this? You don't really know in particular. But once you finish night five, you play as the crying child. And the crying child was soothed in the minigames by the animatronics, if you did get the good ending. And... Once you get back there, you see that there are four other children, and now you see Purple Guy panicking. He's saying, stay away from me. And then he sees this yellow bear suit, which you could obviously put two and two together and say, hey, is that spring trap? And then he laughs at you mockingly, and then the spring locks go off. So in this game, it introduces a thing called a spring lock suit, which is an animatronic suit that can also be worn by humans with a special spring lock system. However, it said that moisture will cause the suit to go off, and if it goes off, it's not going to be exactly good for you. So you learn that Purple Guy, or William Afton, is actually Springtrap. His body is inside the suit, and I got the good ending, as you see here. In order to get the good ending, you must play secret minigames, which show up on the cameras, like double-clicking on the poster of Balloon Boy on a certain camera. And that will fetch you a secret minigame called BB's Air Adventure. Um, now, you have to play through these minigames and finish them to get the good ending. So you collect all these balloons, and then instead of following the exit, you jump through a secret portion of the wall, and Balloon Boy would just jump through and then fall down. And eventually, you'll find that it gets more distorted the further down you go. Once you get to the bottom, you'll find crying children. When you follow towards the right side, you will find that there is a balloon that is changing colors. You collect the balloon, and the minigame ends, and then you just play through the night again. You only need to complete these once, which is good. If you die, you just have to replay the night and not the minigame itself. Then, on night two, you have Mangle's quest, in which Mangle has to assemble himself, so that way um, she can actually get a cake, and then they will give this cake to a crying child in the next minigame. These minigames are quite interesting because they help to flesh out the lore a little bit, as most things do in FNAF. After a little bit of platforming, Mangle will eventually reach the top where he finds a cake. And then, of course, once she collects the cake, the minigame ends. Uh, and then you replay Balloon Boy's air adventure. This time, instead of falling into the abyss, 
you find a row of balloons that you can jump across. Once you reach the end, you give the crying child a cake. And you have to do this, I think, once a night. Sometimes you have to play too many games, such as this Chica mini game that you play by pressing these buttons on the arcade machine. Uh, Chica's party, once again, you give a cake to one of the crying children. So uh, after a little bit of platforming, you give the cake to the child, and then you go on and play through the night. And then you have to do this a handful of times until you successfully, I believe, give cake to four of the crying children. Eventually, you get to play a Spring Bonnie, or at least this purple bear, and maybe it's Shadow Bonnie. This one's really interesting because he's all distorted and garbled, but once you find the crying child, you just give him cake. It's the usual stuff. But once you complete all the minigames, once you finish Night 5, you will get the good ending. There's also this Happiest Day minigame in which you play as a child with a mask on, seemingly at a birthday party of sorts. You can assume that this is probably at a Freddy Fazbear's location because, you know, this is a Five Nights at Freddy's game. But once you get to the end, you see the crying child on the right side and the masks of Freddy, Bonnie, Chica, and Foxy. Then the masks fall down and then you find out, oh, this kid was wearing a puppet mask. And then all the balloons rise into the air and that's the end of the minigame. This, of course, leads to the good ending in FNAF 3, which is what I got. All things considered, I really liked this game a lot. But there's one more thing to talk about. Once you finish Night 5, you unlock a special extra menu, which allows you to view the animatronics in the game. I never saw Chica at all, by the way. And then you get to replay the minigames. After finishing Nightmare, which is basically Night 6, you unlock a cheat menu and jump scares, but I'm not playing Night 6 because I'm not stressing myself out. When this game first came out, I thought it was kind of lame, and I just didn't care for it. However, the more of it I saw, and the more I played it myself, my appreciation for this game began to grow. I don't think this is my least favorite anymore. I think 4 is now my least favorite game of the original 4. I appreciate Scott for changing it up and making the games original, because he could have just made FNAF 2 2.0 if he wanted to and call it 3. You may know that this was supposed to be the end of the Five Nights at Freddy's series in general, but due to Scott's dissatisfaction with the story of FNAF 3, he decided to flesh it out even more with 4, which then led to Sister Location, and then Pizzeria Simulator, and then Ultimate Custom Night, and then Security Breach. FNAF is still alive and well and is not going anywhere. Final statement here is, FNAF 3 is better than I remember it. It's no longer my least favorite. I think this game is really cool. I appreciate this a lot. 2 and 1 is a better game, yes, but this is better than 4, I'd say. 7 out of 10.